Hi, today we're going to look in a little bit of detail at sales invoices. When you go into the sales section, the option is here to add in a new invoice. This is the screen that you will use on a day-to-day -day basis to create new sales invoices in the system. There are two parts to this screen. There's a header area that sets fields for the overall invoice and then another area for individual line items that are within the invoice. So the first thing we need to do is choose what customer this invoice relates to. And this is the list of customers that you would have previously created in the contact section. Next, we need to choose an invoice type. Typically, the type is set to invoice, which is a normal sales invoice. Or alternatively, it could be set to credit note, which is a credit invoice. Every invoice needs a description. This is just for your own internal reference. And then there are some optional fields here that we can set to assign the invoice to a category, which is a cost center, to assign it to a salesperson, or to add in keywords for future reference. The invoice date, which is the transaction date of this invoice, defaults to today, and the due date for this invoice defaults to 30 days later. If the customer has supplied a purchase order number, this can be entered here. This is just for reference and it's optional. And the invoice number, which is your own internal reference for this invoice, defaults to one. And this numbering increments upwards from there. But if you like, you can override that and enter your own invoice number. Each invoice contains one or several line items. These items can be drawn from a list of price list items, which are inventory items that you can create in the settings section, or you can manually enter individual items yourself. Typically, the quantity is one, and then you set a unit price. Having set the price, then you now need to select an account which to assign this item to. Typically, this is to the sales account. And optionally, then you can apply a tax rate to that individual item. In this case, we'll apply the standard city-state tax. And you can see that the amount has changed to add 6.5% of tax. And the total now reflects that. So we're going to go ahead and save this invoice. So the system has now created this invoice. And this is now added into the invoice list screen. And here's the invoice we just created. You can see firstly that the status is awaiting payment. And over here we have a couple of options to do with this invoice. The first is to export the invoice to a PDF. I'll just preview this now. And here you can see a preview of the invoice. And this template is created in the settings section where you can modify the template and include a logo or any other branding that you want. We also have the option of emailing this invoice to our customer. I'll quickly have a look at that. The email will default to the customer's email address. You can add a subject of your choice. The PDF of the invoice is attached to the email. And then you have the option of adding additional text, which goes in the body of the email. And this will default to the, to the description of the invoice. But we won't send that down. And then, of course, we have the option of going back and editing the invoice. So let's have a quick look and see what has happened uh, in our accounts because of adding that invoice. And if we go into our reports and then into our profit and loss, then we can see that in the current month, we can see in the sales account that we have added in $100. And that in the year to date, we are now showing a profit of $100. And that reflects the sale that we've made. So let's go back to our invoice in the invoice list. And if we click on the invoice number, 
will take us to a different screen, which is the View Invoice screen. And in here we can do a few things. Firstly, we can add a note. Typically, this would be a note recording a contact with the customer discussing the invoice. And we can just write any text we like there. And the invoice is added. Or, when the customer pays for this invoice, then we can record receipt of a payment. Now, this can be for the full amount or it can be for a part payment. And we have to assign what bank account that payment has gone into. And we can save the payment. What we can also do is some additional things such as making this invoice a repeating invoice. And this is very useful if the invoice is a template the invoice that will repeat several times. And this can be set to monthly, weekly, or annually. And the start date is the date obviously the repeating will start, and then on the end date, when it will end. And we choose an approval status to make that active. So this invoice will now repeat every month. Now, if we go back to our invoice list, we'll see the invoice is awaiting payment. But we have taken a, a part payment of $50 on that invoice. And let's have a look and see if anything has changed. As you can see, the profit and loss doesn't change. But if we go into the balance sheet, we can see that the accounts receivable has been reduced by $50. So the remainder is the $50 remaining on the invoice plus the $650 of tax. The cash in the company has increased by $50 because we took in a payment on that invoice. And we also have a liability of $650 for the sales tax. Now, if we go back to the invoice, We can go into the view invoice screens from here as well. And if we pay the remainder on that invoice, which is 56.50. Now, if we go into the invoice list, we'll see that the status has changed to paid because the invoice has now been fully paid. And if we go and have a look in our reports and see what has happened, the profit and loss won't have changed, but if we go into the balance sheet, we can see that accounts receivable is now zero. Cash in bank is 106.50, which is the full amount of the invoice. And the tax liability remains. And then our current year earnings reflect the net invoice amount exclusive of tax. So that's really it in terms of looking at sales invoices. Thank you.